expect to, or what typically goes on right now with retail costs and used books. And I think what you shared with us is that an example of a, of a new book might be $150. You might be able to sell it for 40 cents on the dollar, but if you, and you might be able to, so we talked about selling it for 40 cents on the dollar, but that probably that same used bookseller would then sell it back to someone else for $120. So there's some margin in between there. How does Book Cheetah work differently than that? Well, I mean, the, the good news about Book Cheetah is there is no middleman, right? I mean, we are directly student to student. Uh, it's, it's free to sign up, uh, create an account. Um, I, I think my son did it in 30 seconds. I mean, it really requ- requires three pieces of information. Your name, an email address, and that can be as arbitrary as you want. You know, Bob's the man at gmail.com is totally fine. Uh, and then, and then which community you'd like to be associated with. If, if you happen to be at Colorado College, that's where you live and, and, and spend most of your time, you're done, right? We're, we're, we're online. Um, and then, f- Putting your own books up for sale or for trade is free. Looking at other people's stuff is free. Uh, Making your own wish list is free. The only time when it actually costs you any money is if we find you a match that you actually want to pursue. So we find someone who is offering the book you want at the price you want with availability when you want it then it's kind of going to cost you some money. I mean, here's the bottom line. It's going to cost you a whole dollar. Uh, in fact, it can cost you less than that if, if you, you know, if you want, if you want to buy more than one, uh, more than one book at the same time. So you can buy, you know, credits or tokens in a, in a bundle. Uh, but the idea is that's it. That's, that's the whole cost. And then it's up to you and, and the other party, either the, the buyer or the seller, depending on which you are, uh, to, to figure out what, what price is reasonable. Uh, I just, you know, while we were on break there, I actually signed into my own account. I'm looking here at Colorado College. There are 40 books right now on Colorado College offer, offered for zero dollars. That is, they're just taking up space on someone's shelf. They'd be happy to give them to some other student that they know needs them. They just don't know who you are yet. So all you have to do is sign up for an account, post that you like or need that book, and it's yours for free. All right. Well, that sounds like a really good deal. Now, when you when and I'm thinking about selling my book, and I would say, okay, I bought it for new for $150 last year. It's one year old. It's still a current edition, and I put a number on there. I think, well, I think I can get $100 for it. Can someone come back and kind of bid against me and say, hey, I see you've got that book, but I'd rather pay you 90 Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, we make that as easy as possible. We have a live Amazon feed going into the website, so you can see exactly what that same book, same issue, same condition is selling for on Amazon. So you can price competitively if you wish. And then those prices are not, are not binding. They're just indicators of your willingness to buy or sell. Uh, so, so it's up to you to negotiate. Uh, it might be someone you know. Uh, for example, I posted a book for sale the other day and said, well, you know, 25 bucks would be nice. Oh, look, someone wants that book already. I'll see who it is. Oh, look at that. It's my buddy Jim. I'll just give it to him for free, right? <laughs> I don't want to make 25 bucks off my buddy. I'll just, I'll just give it to him. Uh, so that, that transaction is completely up to the individuals involved. So how are you getting the news out? I know this is a new website that you started or a new business that you guys have really put together this, I think, for this fall term. How are you letting students know that it's out there? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, that, that's part of the challenge is, is getting, the, getting the word out. So we're doing that in a number of ways. Um, you know, we've made our catchy YouTube video, which you should totally check out because it has me rapping on it, rapping economics. We'll have uh, to include that link on our website. Yeah, you should, actually. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, we're also hiring interns actively. In fact, we launched our internship program this week. So if anyone's interested in, in experience in a startup, experience making a difference in the world, right, making education more affordable, more accessible uh, to a broader audience, we're, we're hiring right now. Um, we're also uh, reaching out to, uh, through charitable organizations. I guess the one part that I haven't mentioned so far is that part of the business model is to make a difference in the world, not just to the cost of education. So 10 cents of every dollar that we pull in, not 10 cents of our profit, 10 cents of every dollar in revenue goes directly back to organizations that we believe make a difference. That is Teach for America, the Cheetah Conservation Fund, which protects cheetah habitat in in southern Africa, or at the student's discretion to the student government at their school. Well, that sounds like a, a nice deal. So how does Book Cheetah run? Who's funding Who's funding it? How's it... There's got to be something going on in the background where someone's making all this logistics work. 
Yeah, that would be me. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am the back room, right? I am yeah. the I am the CEO, the COO, the CFO, the CIO. Uh, that that's me. Um, I borrow liberally from the bank of my wife, uh, but but that's that's it. It's it's a it's a kind of a one man show. The idea being that this is a great opportunity to practice what I preach, but also to get students involved. Uh, so I'm using it as a learning opportunity, as a co-curricular pedagogical device here at Colorado College. Students are either volunteering or they're working for pay, and and getting real hands-on experience in. So how do we how do we start a business? How do we make it go on a continual basis? And and how do we hopefully make it self-sustaining? And how are you getting these interns involved? Or, or do you, are you going to process through webinars? Kind of it sounds like a great opportunity for students at, in, at every college across the U.S. Um, how will that work? Because I'm sure many of the listeners are listening in right now, going, "Wow, that sounds neat." Yeah, sure. I mean, all the details are on our website at, at bookcheetah.com. Um, we already have probably 15 to 20 uh, schools around the U.S. Um, you know, prominent schools. There's a Harvard chapter, a Yale chapter, a Dartmouth chapter, Stanford chapter. Um, all you really have to do is indicate an interest, and we will happily uh, train you in in what we think might work. But the, but the reason that we want interns, and the reason, frankly, that interns should want this experience, is that it's really about creativity, right? I mean, that's what any startup is about. So think of a way of making your mark. Think of a way of reaching the target audience. Think of a way of of expressing to your local community in ways that I would never imagine. Um, so yeah, okay, we have a Twitter account. Well, that that's cool for some people, but you know, should we be using a Tumblr instead on your campus? Should we be posting actually physically in dorms? Uh, that's up to you. You would be you know the champion or the intern for your campus community. I think it's, it's it sounds like a great program. I'm like I'm liking the economics of it. So, typically, you hear about that the current textbook business model is that publishers do need to make some money. So, unfortunately, more and more updated editions are being created, and the professors are choosing the, the latest edition for their textbooks. How often, what percentage of school, textbooks that a student may need any given year would have to be new editions that they'd have to buy? And typically, how many years would they last? Yeah, that's a great question. So, so in in any given year, virtually never would you have to buy the absolute latest edition. Sometimes that's okay. absolutely required, but usually the content from the previous edition is awfully close, right? I mean, the chapter numbers might be slightly different, or the exact problems in the back of the chapter for practice and review might be slightly different. I'd say 80 to 90 percent of the students that come into my classes on a regular basis have a used version. It might even be an edition older, but it's a used copy of the same version or something like that. Uh, you know, there are some students who truly want things new. I, I totally get that. I respect that. Great. Then Amazon is for you. Um, but but if if it's not, if you're really trying to you know save those those dollars for where it might matter more to you as a student or as a family supporting a student in college, that's who our services is providing. Um, you know, in terms of how often they, the, the publishers switch editions or upgrade editions, it depends a little on the topic, on, on the thematic. Uh, for example, uh, the, the newest, latest, greatest edition of uh, the Shakespearean tragedies uh, probably doesn't come out every other year. <laughs> on the other hand, you know, the latest, greatest update on uh, the macro macroeconomic policies and debates of the 21st century. Well, it probably comes out every other year, frankly. So, Dan, when you if you as you encourage kids to, or students to be using BookCheat, it sounds like a great model. Do you think that on average now students may be able to get away with paying only five hundred dollars or fifty percent a year, or even less than that to get all the college? books that they need. I've only got a couple more seconds, but I wanted to get that information from you. I think we can easily cut that textbook cost in half, maybe better than that. And with the increasing move toward electronic textbooks, which I hope BookCheetah is perfectly poised to take advantage of, I hope we can cut it even more than that. That is... That's awesome, and I'd like to. We, we can almost do a show on what's going to happen with electronic textbooks, but I've got to let you go now. Thanks so much for being on our show. Oh, entirely my pleasure. We've been talking about ways to save on the cost of college textbooks with our guest, Dan Johnson, founder of Book Cheetah. He estimates that the local student-to-student exchange students could save 50% or more on books. Check out Dan's blog on College Smart Radio with links to bookcheetah.com. Well, that wraps up another weekly show of College Smart Radio. We hope you picked up some new information today that helps you figure out ways to manage the runaway cost of college. You can hear us each week here on KDOW 1220 AM, Saturdays at 3 p.m., 
We promise to bring you up-to-date information from the front lines of helping parents deal with the most expensive years of their lives. For a link to the podcast of this show and our prior weekly shows, go to our website, www.collegesmartradio.com. This is Beatrice Schultz. Thanks for tuning in to College Smart Radio. We look forward to sharing more helpful information next week. You've been listening to College Smart Radio with certified financial planner Beatrice Schultz. If you have a question on today's topic, log on to collegesmartradio.com or call area code 650-587-1517. That's 650-587-1517. Join us next week at this time for another edition of College Smart Radio on AM 1220 KDOW.